Let me start off by saying that when it comes to conservatorship and guardianship, every state has its own laws. What we do here in South Carolina may not be what they do in New York or in Florida. So I'm gonna try to answer y'all's questions about Wendy's guardianship as best as I possibly can. So I've served in the role as a court appointed guardian and a guardian at litem. Typically what happens in the state of South Carolina and you'll find similarities across the country, anyone can petition the court for guardianship. It could either be probate court or family court. And what that person does is they would produce information or documentation to support that that person is a vulnerable adult, which means they are an adult, so they're 18, and due to their age, disability, medical condition, or other infirmities, they're unable to provide for their well-being, whether that be financial, whether that be medical, whether that be social. And what happens at that point in time, the judge assigns an attorney to the vulnerable adult. The judge may also assign a temporary court appointed guardian. The judge will also assign a guardian at litem. So a guardian at litem is a third party who works on behalf of the vulnerable adult. So that person works in the best interest of that vulnerable adult. So as a guardian at litem, I would go in and I would assess the person, I would assess the situation, I would also talk with family members to make a determination as to whether or not that person should lose any of their rights. I mean, and it's a ton of rights. I could check off whether or not they lose their right to vote, whether or not they lose their right to choose who they wanna spend time with, whether or not they lose their right to make decisions on travel, finances, it's a slew of rights. And so that guardian at litem would go in and check each one of those rights, whether or not the person will retain the right or the person will lose the right. And I will tell you, a good judge does not want the person to lose all of their rights. The only time I have ever, well, I've never restricted all rights for anybody, but there was one particular time I did restrict quite a few rights, and that is because that person had a mental illness that was not treated. Other than that, my people retain a lot of their rights with the exception of maybe finances, which is when a conservator comes into play. In South Carolina, typically the conservator only manages the money and the guardian manages the health care, but the guardian can also manage the money. Now, you could be in court for six months to a year to several years. During that time, the court-appointed guardian does act as the parent, for lack of a better word. What I am most interested in in Wendy's situation is where is the guardian at litem? And what was the result of the assessment that guardian ad litem did to determine whether or not the person should lose their rights? And if they do, what rights were? Now, I've watched the first part of Wendy's documentary because it is streaming on Hulu. Some of you had questions about if she does not have the cognitive ability to make decisions, how is she the producer of her documentary? You know, who provided the permission for her to release the documentary about her life if she's lost competency or lost her cognitive ability? Well, at that time when the documentary was filmed, maybe she did have capacity. Her mom was in the documentary, so her mom was alive at that time. So there are a lot of moving parts, but I wanted you all to understand, just to follow up on some of the questions that you had, there should be a guardian ad litem in place. What was the guardian ad litem's assessment? Did Wendy lose her rights? If, if she did, what were they? Because it's typically not all of them. And usually, if there is a family member that steps up to the plate who wants to be the guardian, typically what I do is that is the first person in line if they meet certain criteria. If the family member does not meet certain criteria, then they will not be granted permission for guardianship. A lot of family members don't want to do it because it is a huge responsibility. They become the actual parent. And so, you know, we'll continue to follow the case. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing part two. And if you have any further questions and I can answer them, please drop them below in the comment section.